Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the third webinar in the BioExcel webinar series. My name is Adam Carter and uh, I'm very pleased to have with me today Adam Aspital, who's going to be talking about atomistic molecular dynamics setup with MDWeb. Before we get started with that, I just want to have a very give you a very quick overview of the BioExcel project, no more than five minutes, just to give you a little introduction as to what we're doing. Um, and uh, then uh, Adam will speak for, for 40, 45 minutes or so, and we'll have some time at the end to take questions. So um, we, can, we can take all the questions at the end of the session. Before I go any further, I should let you know that this webinar is being recorded. Um, you can, uh, you'll be able to uh, see the, the recording on YouTube, and this will be linked from the BioExcel website uh, a few days after after this webinar. So you'll be able to catch up with all the details there. And you will also be able to see details of past BioExcel webinars as well. So the BioExcel Centre of Excellence, it's a new centre of excellence funded by the, the EU, and we're a centre of excellence for computational biomolecular research. Um, we're built on the, the centre is built on three main pillars, essentially. We, we talk about three pillars which describe the BioExcel Centre of Excellence. The first one is excellence in biomolecular software. So um, on this slide, we mentioned Gromax, Haddock, and CPMD. Um, these uh, are some key codes in the biomolecular research community. Um, and what we want to do in this project is to improve the performance, efficiency, and scalability of these codes. We're lucky in that the, the lead developers for, for these codes are partners in the project. Um, so we have a direct line to um, these uh, simulation codes. Um, and it means that uh, we can also support and feedback uh, into, into the codes development. Another aspect of BioExcel is excellence in usability. So, as well as having these three codes that we're trying to improve, we want to think about the codes in the, con uh, in the context of wider workflows. So what people are actually doing with them and trying to make those uh, workflows work more seamlessly, more straightforwardly. Um, and as part of that in the project, we are uh, trying to compile uh, workflows using some standard workflow platforms like the ones listed at the bottom here, um, which will bring together the codes uh, along with the codes that I just mentioned on the last slide, along with lots of other tools and services that are used in the biomolecular research community. And as well as other tools, we're also considering bringing in data sources as well. So trying to build um, an integrated platform uh, to allow people to, to make the most of all the different tools that the, the center is supporting. And finally, we are interested in, as well as offering the, you know, supporting the software side of things, we're trying to build competence, both amongst uh, academics and industry users. So we're trying to promote best practice and train end users to make the most of these pieces of software and to make the most of the, the systems and the environments that we are uh, making available. So we're targeting both academic and non-profit users here uh, and industrial users as well. Uh, and the project is also reaching out to independent software vendors, academic code providers, and academic and commercial resource providers as well, so providers of services and hardware. So that's a kind of higher level description of the, the kind of things that BioExcel as a center of excellence is trying to do. One of the key things that we have for our users uh, are interest groups, and we have, uh, we're launching Initially, these six interest groups that you can read on this slide here. One interest group that will possibly be of particular interest to some of the people on this webinar is the biomolecular simulations entry level users interest group. So we'll be sending an email after this webinar uh, to invite you to join um, these interest groups if that's something that interests you. Alternatively, you can find out more about them on our website. The, the interest groups will have mailing lists, um, access to the forums at ask.bioexcel, 
Um, and we'll also be able to provide code depositories, chat channels, video channels, any other sort of collaborative platforms that are of use to the people in the interest groups. So hopefully that gives you a very uh, brief overview of, of the Centre of Excellence, what we're trying to do. So now uh, I would just like to hand over to today's presenter, and I'll just give a few words to, to introduce Adam. He's a, a postdoctoral fellow in Molecular Modeling and Bioinformatics Unit, the MMB, hosted at the Institute for Research and Biomedicine in Barcelona. And he's a computer technician for the Spanish National Institute of Bioinformatics. He came originally from a computer science background, but he jumped into the bioinformatics world and got trapped there by the fascinating field of structural bioinformatics. Um, after two years, he joined INB, and he's been working there for more than 10 years. Uh, INB, amongst many other projects, has recently joined Elixir, a large European project which is building a sustainable European infrastructure for biological information. And he's also been involved in several different projects at IRB and the Barcelona Supercomputer Center. While working as a bioinformatician, he got his PhD in bio biotechnology from the University of Barcelona with his thesis, High Throughput Computational Studies of Macromolecular Structure Flexibility. And uh, since then, at INB, he's developed a set of public web servers and databases related to macromolecular structure flexibility, including MDWeb, which is the main topic of today's presentation. So I'm very happy now then to, to hand over to Adam. Uh, I will make you the presenter now and uh, you can take over for the rest of the talk. Okay, hi everybody. Can you see the slides? All good, Adam. Carry on. Okay, so thanks Adam for your presentation. Uh, as Adam said, uh, my name is Adam Hospital. I'm working in IRB Barcelona, Institute for Research in Biomedicine. And I'm going to talk uh, about uh, atomistic molecular dynamics uh, set up using uh, our uh, web tool called MDWeb. I have divided this webinar in three main blocks. Uh, the first one, in the first one, I, I will give you a brief introduction about the importance of molecular flexibility, about uh, a theoretical uh, method called molecular dynamics uh, and its limitations. Uh, I will briefly introduce three different platforms developed in IRB, Model, MD Movie, and MD Web, uh, uh, and then I will move to the second part where I will uh, focus on MD Web that it's a, a platform to run molecular dynamics on web. <clears throat> and in the third and last part of the, of the webinar, I will just uh, introduce uh, other web services servers that we developed at IRB, all related to macromolecular flexibility. So starting with the introduction, um, I guess that if you have registered to this uh, webinar, you are all aware about the importance of molecular flexibility. But just to reinforce that, I would like to present just three uh, nice examples about, uh, about this. The, the first one, if you can follow uh, the pointer, is, the, is a, a cross-talking experiment in one particular uh, protein that it's called acetylcholinesterase, where we extracted uh, ligands. Here you have different PDB codes that are different different conformation of the same protein. This is the same protein, but different conformation. So we extracted the ligand from this conformation, and we tried to cross-talk these ligands to the same conformations again. Uh, as you can see here, the, the docking results were really bad. Uh, bluish uh, squares are bad results. Reddish squares are good results. So uh, this is telling us that the differences between the different conformations are very important for the docking uh, of a ligand. And even if we look at the diagonal here, that is uh, when we try to dock the ligand extracted from one particular conformation to exactly the same conformation, in some of the cases, we also uh, got bad results. So um, um, this is telling 
<clears throat> it is telling us that, that, that there are uh, some structural rearrangements after docking of the ligand. So again, flexibility matters. Um, in the second example here, um, it, it represents how some properties uh, like protein channels in here, this one in the left part, or um, drug cavities in the right part, can only be seen when, when looking at the dynamics of the protein. So certain movements of the structure can make uh, internal channels accessible from the exterior, like these ones here, and new cavities, like this one, these ones here, can be formed in the surface, uh, so allowing the recognition of small molecules by the protein. And uh, finally, in the third example here, um, this is a typical example of a gate opening molecular switch. So uh, here, uh, residues in the protein can act as a, that, uh, as a molecular switch, uh, a door that opens and closes, uh, letting small molecules diffuse inside the proteins. So in this particular example, uh, this is a, a study of a trun truncated hemoglobin. Uh, you can see here the events of opening and closing of this door in the wild type protein. Uh, and these events almost disappear completely upon mutation of the key residues involved in this, uh, in this gate. So, um, so uh, um, molecular flexibility is uh, uh, important so that we should not look only at the uh, static pictures as we have them in, in the PDB, in the protein data bank, but we should look at the dynamics of the protein. So how these proteins moves uh, and the flexibility uh, information. Unfortunately, uh, with experimental uh, techniques are difficult to, uh, to obtain this, this experimental information, this, sorry, the flexibility information is, is difficult to obtain by experimental techniques although we have some of these techniques such as uh, NMR studies that can give us uh, important insights about uh, these dynamics. Uh, however, when we are dealing with more complex systems such as big proteins or even macromolecular complexes, these experimental techniques are, are still not able to extract this uh, flexibility data. So that has increased the importance of theoretical techniques uh, such as, for example, molecular dynamic simulations. Molecular dynamic simulation is the, is the most widely used theoretical technique to obtain these flexibility, flexibility properties. Um, and it works solving the classical equations of motions uh, where forces acting on every atom are obtained by deriving these equations that are, co that are called force fields, uh, where potential energy here is deduced from molecular structure, uh, bonded terms, so bond angle and dihedral, and also non-bonded terms such as van der Waals uh, and electrostatic energy. Um, the simulated system, sorry, um, could be represented at different levels of detail, uh, being the most used, the atomistic representation, this one here, where we take into account all the different atoms of the structure. Um, all the coarse gain models like this one here are, are becoming more and more popular. Uh, in these cases, we gather together in single bits more than one atom. With the atomistic resolution, we can reach uh, time scales from picoseconds to microseconds, whereas from uh, using the coarse grain resolution, we can reach uh, microseconds to milliseconds time scale. Um, when talking about molecular dynamics, we must uh, uh, mentioned the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2013 that was awarded to Martin Karplus, Michael Levitt, and Ariel Warshall for uh, their development of uh, multi-scale models for complex chemical systems. They, they are considered the fathers of uh, molecular dynamic simulations, and I, I recommend you to take a look at the BioExcel EU um, web page because uh, we have uh, an interview that will be published soon in the web page. Uh, we have an interview uh, to Michael Levitt. So take a look at the, keep an eye on the, on the BioExcel web page. So why don't everybody use this uh, molecular dynamics technique? So mainly because it's uh, usage limitations. Uh, the main ones are these three limitations. The first one is the large computational resources that it needs. Uh, typically, we use hundreds or thousands of processors to run a single uh, simulation. 
we have also uncertainties uh, with the four fields of the parameters that we have to run these theoretical uh, techniques. We, we still don't know if they, if they are accurate, accurate enough to reproduce the reality. And, and still today, new force fields are being developed to solve these problems, the problems of previous uh, force fields. And uh, the last one, maybe the most important for us, is the high level of expertise, the, the steep learning curves that it has uh, to start uh, running, to start doing a molecular dynamics. So at the end, if we, we want to go from a static structure to a dynamic one using this theoretical technique, the first thing that we encounter it's like a wall in the middle of the road. So we need to climb the road, we need to jump this, but we need to avoid this, uh, overcome this limitation. So, but be a little bit optimistic and let's go through this uh, limitation and see how we can overcome them. So for the first one, for the computational resources, um, this macromolecular dynamics theoretical techniques, uh, they are taking profit of the so-called high-performance computing HPC system. So the recent MD codes like Amber, Gromax, um, NAMD, they typically allow running simulations in parallel using hundreds of processors. Um, for example, from these uh, powerful supercomputers like this uh, Marin Austin that we have at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Another way to overcome this limitation is of course, if we don't have access to HPC centers, we can use uh, distributed computing initiatives like uh, these ones, where simulations are run using personal computers from volunteers around the world. Uh, some examples of this is Folding at Home, uh, started at, uh, at the Stanford University already 15 years ago, or, or a more recently example, the GPU grid here in Barcelona. Um, they, they run they work uh, using the idle time of the computers, of personal computers around the world. So for example, when you have the screensaver in your computer and your computer is not processing anything, it can run a piece of a simulation that then is gathered together and joined together, uh, building a, a single result. Um, another way to do that, and maybe <laughs> the perfect way to do it is uh, build a machine completely specific to run these molecular dynamics. That's what uh, people in uh, BE show research in New York uh, did with this Anton supercomputer. Of course, this is um, this Anton supercomputer is uh, unfortunately is a private resource and, uh, and uh, only a few of these machines are available for public research. But, but but it has pushed away the boundaries of what can be simulated using MD. So the, it can produce simulations times um, reaching the, the millisecond time scale. So time scales that uh, had been never explored before. But back to the reality, uh, what has really changed completely the field of molecular dynamics is the appearance of, of the GPU cards. So the, this hardware architecture that were designed specifically to accelerate the generation of uh, frames per second in the field of 3D computer games. But, but they turn to be uh, optimal, uh, fit, they, they fit perfectly for computing MD simulations, just because uh, they have the ability to compute thousands of operations in parallel. So most of the MD codes uh, existing today have been adapted in the recent years, um, and some of them with a complete redesign of the code uh, to reach performance similar or even better than hundreds of uh, common uh, processors working in parallel just using one of these uh, GPU cards. And, and of course you can buy one of the GPU cards and have it in your own machine. So all, all of these G HPC systems um, together with also with the improvements on, on the MD codes and especially the, the possibility to run these codes in these GPU cards this has helped in, in not just overcome the computational resources limitations that, are, that I presented before, but also to, to popularize the field of molecular dynamic simulations. So for, for the limitation regarding the uncertainties of the force field parameters, we should also be optimistic here because we are getting closer to the result obtained with high resolution techniques such as uh, quantum mechanics. So to, to illustrate that, I will show you just a recent example of a reparameterization of a nucleic acid force field. This is a force field uh, specifically designed for nucleic acid simulations um, that, that we developed here in the, in the MMB group in, in collaboration with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. 
So we we already published one of these um, force fields in 2007, almost 10 years ago. Um, and uh, and the, so we we find we found a problem with this RMBC zero a couple of years ago uh, when we were able to reach the microsecond timescale with the new uh, with improvements of the new uh, hardware as uh, I presented in the previous slide. So uh, we started to work on a correction of this uh, of this force field, but in this case we focus on the parameters that we know that were uh, were wrong, so sugar packaging, for example, epsilon theta and guide torsions, and, um, and we managed to publish that after an extensive uh, test, so uh, uh, many, many different simulations, many, many different systems to be sure that this force field is, uh, is uh, working uh, well. And here, the most important thing about this slide is here, is this plot here where you can see this is the old param BSC zero, zero, this is the new one, and this is the quantum mechanic uh, result. So you can see that we are getting closer to the, to the high resolution data. So we should be optimistic about that. And of course, we are still working on these force fields and we are improving every time we need, we, we encounter a new issue. And, uh, and, and this is a, a particular example for nucleic acid, but of course there are different groups working also on protein force fields. Um, the last limitation is the level of expertise uh, needed, the, the steep learning curve, and this is one of the most important for us. And to, to illustrate that, I, I've plot here just uh, one example. There is uh, the typical pipeline that you will, you will find in the, in the books of, uh, that uh, um, explain molecular dynamics, and this is just a setup. This is just a preparation of a, a protein structure as you have as you have it in the PDB, uh, to go from this uh, static structure to a, sorry, to a completely prepared system surrounded by waters with counter ions to neutralize the charge, uh, etc. So a completely system prepared to uh, to be used as an input for a molecular dynamic simulation. So you can see that it has a lot of different uh, steps. So uh, basic steps, more complicated steps like equilibrating the system. With we are using different programs, in this case TDP and Sander from Amber pack package, but also CMIP to neutralize the system. We are using also scripting, uh, mix it here, so to know if we, the strata contains a ligand. We, we are using a database of parameters for the different ligands, etc. Et so it's really complicated, it's not easy to, uh, to start using the MD if, uh, if you don't know how to run all of these different steps. So how, how can we overcome this level of expertise uh, um, problem issues? Uh, before answering that question, let me jump a little bit on time uh, back to 2010, actually 2006. Uh, that was a time when we started a project in the group that is called MODEL, Molecular Dynamics Extended Library, where we wanted to, uh, to um, simulate a representative set of uh, structures taken from the PDB. So representative set meaning that they shared uh, less than 90% of sequence similarity between them. So we ended up with uh, 1,600 structures. And we simulate that with uh, different programs, with different force fields, um, and, and to manage to publish that, and we published that four years after that, after the beginning of the, of the project in 2010. Uh, we build a web interface connected to a relational database to make all the results publicly available. So uh, I'm not going into details about um, the model project, but I, I just want you to uh, to realize that what uh, we, we couldn't uh, start 1600 um, or 1800 simulations manually. We need to run and out. We need to build an automatic uh, MD setup, run an analysis uh, pipeline to do all of these uh, simulations. So that was the starting point for our, our project that was called MDMovie. And this MDMovie, it's called MDMovie because it's using a library that it's called BioMovie and it's a library to, to build uh, uh, web services. So what we did is extract all of these small pieces here. So we split the pipelines in the different pieces that, that it has and convert these pieces to web services, independent web services, so little pieces of code, of programming code, that, uh, that do uh, a small 
uh, things like these ones here. So uh, using different programs and not, and with that we could uh, use different MD packages uh, and uh, and we could join together the different web services building uh, any kind of workflow that we wanted. So uh, for example, and this is just one example, uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you one thing and is that the, this Bayou movie um, um, library allowed us to not just uh, build these web services but also to add semantical information to these web services. So our inputs and outputs of these web services were not just uh, XML files, they have a, a biological information. So for example, we have an object that is a PDB and we know that the PDB object contains um, the information about the atom, the residues, the X, Y and Z, uh, Cartesian coordinates, etc. And we have another, for example, another object of the ontology that is called uh, Gromax uh, MD trajectory and we know that this object contains the XTC trajectory, for example, the, the TPR binary file to run the simulation, the, the grow file, the top topology, etc. So we have objects with uh, information that allow us also to um, to um, find out which web services can be run from one particular object of this ontology. We'll see that uh, later on. But we could uh, build um, a set of workflows from these web services. Um, this is just an example, generated topology uh, for Gromax with this uh, Amber Force field. Here is just an example to illustrate you that we can also mix uh, scripting these boxes here are scripts, these one are web services, and these are the uh, deontology objects that I, that I was explaining in the previous slide. So we built uh, a set of uh, workflows uh, with different programs, Amber, NAMD, Gromax, and for different pieces of the workflow. So we can just generate the topology if we want, that would be this one here. We can run a setup that is generating the topology, that it's uh, uh, fixing the side chains, adding the hydrogens, and in the setup process, minimizing the hydrogens and minimizing the structure. The setup with solvation will be the same, but uh, adding the box of, uh, of solvent and also structural waters. And the complete setup will be uh, all of these and an equilibration to equilibrate all the all the box solvent and the protein. So obtaining a final system uh, prepared to run a microdynamic simulation. And the last part after uh, having this MD movie set of web services and workflows was to to uh, have something to ease even more the usage of this uh, of this um, um, uh, infrastructure and for that we, we build a web service, a web interface that is called MD Web, where we could uh, uh, directly access to all of these, uh, easily to all of these workflows and web services. Now we'll move to, to this MD Web in the second part of the webinar. Um, this is how the, the, the main page looks like, this is the link of the, of the web server and is just to tell you that uh, you have uh, here a, a login a step. Uh, I, I recommend you to register. It will take you just a minute or less than that, and it's important because you can you can uh, work as an anonymous user, but your your workspace will not be persistent. So if you if the PHP session expires or you close uh, the browser, all of your work will be removed. So uh, just register is just a minute, and you will be able to start uh, using uh, the platform. So uh, there's two different ways to start uh, a new project in MD Web. The first one is uh, working from a base structure, so uh, doing a setup of the of the structure, and the second one is working from a trajectory, so analyzing the resulting trajectory. So we start with a, a structure one, and the first step, and that is something that is not implemented in the web services is the structure checking. So this is a first step and it's a really, really important step um, <clears throat> because the, the, the correctness of the input structure is crucial for a, for a simulation. So if we take a look here, uh, we can choose between different, in, so the checking page is divided in three main blocks. The first block is uh, something that you can choose or you can uh, fix. So for example, we can choose models that you are interested in simulate, you can choose chains, uh, also atomic alternate locations, and you can choose 
between different uh, AMIT assignments. Uh, and I will show you that in a, in a live uh, demonstration now in a minute. The second part is, some, is information, it's warnings that the checking page is giving to you. So, so like missing atoms or missing residues, that uh, meaning that your protein is not uh, is not complete. And that's important also for the dynamics, and uh, and also the clashes, the atomic clashes that your that your structure can have. And the third part is the part about the ligands. So the checking page is telling you if your protein has uh, known ligands, known meaning that we have the parameters for this ligand in the database uh, from our model uh, simulation database or unknown, meaning that we don't have the parameters, so you can upload if you have it or, or just generate the parameters. So now let me try to show you this here in a live uh, demonstration. Here is how the, the, the checking page looks like. This is a transcription factor protein uh, bind to a, a nucleic acid uh, structure. So, uh, the first thing here is that uh, if you go to the PDB, you can see that this is the asymmetric unit, but the asymmetric unit has two copies of the biological unit. You see, this is the biological unit one, this is the biological unit two. So, if you are, um, if you want to just simulate the, the biological unit, you can go to the chain and just select the change that you are interested in. So, for example, these ones. And you select that, and now you have the biological unit, and you uh, will um, simulate or you you will prepare just this part of the of your protein. So all of these are green checks, and then here you have a, a red check. You can take a look at this is a polar acceptor clash. So if you put the mouse on top of uh, this clash, you will see where is the problem. The problem seems to be that we have two oxygens that are too near to each other. And here you can, sorry, you can take a look at the other. Another problem that it's an oxygen that is too near a carbon. Let me show you another example. There is a ubiquitin. And in this case, the toy protein uh, ubiquitin, you have a lot of different um, um, analysis for this protein. This protein has a, an amide assignment that may be incorrect according to our checking page. And you can see here the problem. You have two nitrogens that are too close to each other. And actually, if we go to the polar donor cluster here, we can see that Actually, this is a problem. This is a, a, a clash between two nitrogens. But in this case, we can fix this just uh, swapping the nitrogen for the oxygen in this amide. So you, we try to fix this, recompute everything, and now the polar donor clash has disappeared. And we can uh, go ahead with the simulation. We still have one possible problem here. And you can see here we have uh, two oxygens that are too close. But in this case, we can also here see that we have possible, a possible hydrogen bond here between this uh, oxygen and this nitrogen, and another one here between this nitrogen and this oxygen. So it's not a major problem because it, it, looks, uh, it looks fine. So we can uh, go ahead, click Next, and uh, start with a setup with the web. So after the checking page, this is the workspace. You will have the base structure here and an image of the base structure. And then if you click on top of the base structure, you, uh, you have different options here, different ballots that, uh, that uh, meaning performing a new setup operation, performing a new simulation or optimization, performing a new analysis, visualize the structure with uh, RASMOL or JMOL, be with the log file if something went wrong, uh, download the results or, or delete this item. If we could click on operations, for example, we have a, a list of operations to choose. Some of these operations are web services, these MD Movie web services that I, I presented before, and some of the operations are 
workflow. So pre-configured workflows with all of the different steps, all of the different web services that are going to be executed uh, uh, one after the other. And for example, if we choose one of these workflows, generate topology for Gromax, and we put the mouse on top of the question mark, and the web will tell you uh, what is actually doing this, uh, this uh, workflow in this case, is removing the crystallographic waters from the structure, is adding the sidechain, the missing atoms in the sidechains, and is adding the hydrogens uh, with PDB to GMX uh, tool from Gromax package. In this case, we can also choose a different force field, uh, and we choose this one. For complex uh, workflows like, like this one here, that uh, may, take, uh, may take a while, uh, uh, even hours, we have this workflow progress report where you can take a look at the, at the plot, you can follow your uh, workflow and you can see if your, uh, uh, which of the web services are already done, which of the web services are still waiting and which is actually running at the moment. Um, if you are not interested in uh, running pre-configured workflows and you want to uh, build your own workflow, you can also do that. Uh, just joining different web services one after the other. So for example, from a base structure, we can clean the structure, we can add the hydrogens, generating a topology, in that case with Gromax, this is just a particular example. Uh, minimize the hydrogens, uh, minimize then the structure, solvate the system, so adding the box of water, minimize the system, equilibrate the final system, and obtain the configuration files to run uh, the molecular dynamics. Um, here, you can see the different data types. These are objects of the ontology that I was uh, telling you uh, before, and the MD movie ontology, PDB structure, PSF, num structure, stop, uh, it's amber topology structures, etc. So um, depending on these bullets here that are the objects, and the web is able to identify which web services can be run uh, using this object as input. So with this, we can go from this static structure to this prepared structure uh, to use as input, as an input to run a molecular dynamics. The next step is running the molecular dynamics, but of course, this is an online platform. We, we don't have machines to run uh, uh, nanoseconds and microseconds for molecular dynamics. We restricted uh, the molecular dynamics run in this platform to 0 0.5 nanoseconds, so 500 picoseconds, but the good point is that uh, MD Web is able to return the configuration files without running the simulation, so, but uh, it will um, build for you all the needed configuration files for you to run the simulation in your own HPC platform, GPU card, etc. So in this case, for example, I've put here 10,000 uh, picoseconds uh, with a temperature of 300 kelvins with an output frequency uh, to write uh, in the trajectory file every 500 steps, so I will end up with 10,000 snapshots, so one snapshot per picosecond, and I can download uh, all the needed files uh, after running this, uh, this web service. The web service in this case, again, if we put the, the mouse on top of the question mark, uh, will tell you <clears throat> how is generating the configuration file. So in this case, MPT ensemble using uh, particle measurable, etc. And if you click here in more information, it will uh, open the help page that is an extended uh, help page informing with the information about all the different uh, workflows, web services, ontology objects, etc. And you have also you have also here in this part here tutorials about the analysis setup and also run that you can follow step by step um, to perform one uh, setup or analysis of your trajectory. So now we are in the analysis part, starting the project from a trajectory. Uh, of course, again, this is an online platform, so we restricted the, the upload to up to 100 megabytes of information. But if you strip uh, the water molecules and you uh, extract a representative set of snapshots from your trajectory, you can build a trajectory with less than 100 uh, megabytes and try to upload it to MD Web. That's what I did. In this case, so for example, I have a trajectory of 23 uh, megabytes. This trajectory is a 10 nanoseconds trajectory, which I extracted just 1,000 snapshots, stripping the waters, and I was able to upload it to uh, MD Web uh, and run, in this case, for example, an RMSD 
basic analysis and plot the analysis here. This is from Gromax, so this is nanometers. Mm, again, if we click on base trajectory, it will open a, a set, a list of operations that are web services from MDMovie. Uh, here you can see at web services to convert between different formats, uh, compress the trajectory to PCZ, convert the trajectory to PDB files, to bin post format, CRD format, DCD format, etc. We have getters, get a trajectory fragment, get the trajectory snapshot, get average structure, and we have basic analysis that are basic but very important are the first analysis that you do to see if your trajectory is, is behaving in the, in the right way, like B-factor per residue, radius of gyration along the trajectory, RMSD along the trajectory would be this one, or RMSD per residue. Uh, there's one particular um, service here that is flexibility analysis that is quite general, but this is general because it's, actually, it's not a web service, it's actually a link to another server that we have implemented in, in IRB that is called FlexServe, protein flexibility analysis, uh, in this case from coarse grain, coarse grain simulation, but also from uh, atomistic simulation. So it is able to use uh, trajectories from our model um, database, also from our MD web uh, generated trajectories, and it is computing a set of analysis, uh, particularly specific for proteins, so here we have principal components, variance profile, B-factor landscape, a lot of different flexibility analysis. And uh, it is able to show you this analysis in a graphical way, also with interactive uh, JMOL applets. Um, and it's also able to work uh, from a static uh, protein structure, and uh, it has implemented uh, three different coarse grain dynamics to, uh, to produce a trajectory, coarse grain trajectory in this case, and run the set of analysis. So, and this um, flexibility server allows me to move to the final part of the, of the webinar where I just wanted to uh, tell you about uh, four different servers that we have in IRB uh, related to macromolecular flexibility, two of them related uh, specific to proteins and two of them specific to nucleic acid uh, simulation. So and two of them are um, uh, web servers to extract uh, flexibility information, FlexSurf and NAFlex, and two of them are molecular dynamics databases of uh, molecular dynamics simulations, model and Bignasim. So I have already introduced to you FlexSurf. NAFlex is a web server for the study of nucleic, acid, nucleic acids flexibility, so which is specific for nucleic acids. Um, and it's, it's, it's um, pretty similar to MDWeb, it's powered by MDWeb, so you can run a setup, run a uh, uh, molecular dynamics, and run a, uh, an analysis um, of, the, um, of a simulated trajectory, and run a set of uh, flexibility um, analysis uh, specifically designed for nucleic acids. And of course, uh, again, you have uh, representations, uh, graphical representation of all of, all of these uh, flexibility analyses. Model is a database, uh, as I have introduced you before, uh, for protein molecular dynamics. We have uh, more than, uh, nowadays we have 1,800 uh, different molecular dynamics simulations that were run at the moment in the Marenstone supercomputer. We have a, um, a database with all the metadata and analysis of these simulations, and we also have all the stat static data, all the trajectories in disks. And uh, you have a web server to uh, see all the information, all the analysis, and the, and the compressed trajectories. And finally, in the most recent one, the most recent server is uh, BigNASIM, Big Data uh, Nucleic Acid Simulation Database, where um, we did exactly the same. We, uh, we store uh, trajectories for nucleic acid uh, simulation, but in this case, we move to the no uh, SQL, to the non relational. Databases, we used uh, Cassandra for trajectory coordinates and Mongo for uh, trajectory analysis and metadata. And, uh, and we also built a, a, web, uh, a graphical web interface to have access, to public access to all of this information. And of course, we use NAFlex to visualize all of the analysis uh, that we have already uh, run to all of the simulations that we have in the database. So with that, uh, I just put here you the 
just put here the links of the different web servers that I have presented. Uh, remember that this is recorded, so you can uh, you can take a look at these slides afterwards. So this is our BioExcel Center of Excellence. These are the molecular dynamics packages. And with that, I just want to acknowledge all my group, molecular modeling and bioinformatics, and in particular to our group leader, Modesto Orozco, and to the director of all the web servers here in IRB, Joseph UGLP. And now, if you have questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Adam. That's great. Um, we do already have some questions in the uh, in the question section of the room. So I just want to remind people that if you do have a question, you can uh, type them into the section that's labelled questions, and we will try to answer them. So um, the first question was from Funso. Um, and so, uh, if you're able to use audio, you, could, you can ask your question directly. Um. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, that's clear. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the webinar. Um, I'm a little bit of a rookie in this and trying to see how I can work with my work. Um, I have sort of worked with a predicted structure, I mean biomology modeling, to predict the structure of my protein. Uh, can I check the, I mean, can I use this tool that you have talked about for checking uh, protein structure, correctness of a structure to on the predicted protein? Well, you, we can, you can use this checking page that I was uh, presenting in this webinar. Uh, this will just look at the distances between uh, different atoms, so looking at the clashes, looking at the missing residues, and so on. But uh, maybe in your case, you need to work with uh, some um, program that looks for the energetics or something like that, uh, more advanced that, than just uh, distances. But yes, of course, we, you, you can just upload your structure and, uh, and take a look at the, at the checking page. Oh, okay. Thank you. And um, if one is to start this molecular dynamics, uh, which of these molecular dynamics packages, or what, do, do they have, what advantages they have over the other? I mean, for somebody who is going to start afresh, or is that in, Nearly. You mean from, from the different MD packages available? Yeah, the different MD packages available, yeah. Yeah, well, that depends. So, so one, um, the, the main problem, let's say, or issue is that do, some of them needs license. So, for example, to use the, the molecular dynamics uh, program in, in the AMBER package, that is Sander or PMMD, you need a license to do that, uh, to use this. Uh, in Gromax, for example, it is free. You can download it and you can use it. And, uh, and in NAMD, it is also free. So that's the main point. And then it depends on the HPC cluster that you have. If you have GPUs, if you have uh, um, a supercomputer, for example, or if you, you will run this in your own uh, computer, so it depends. OK. Thank you. OK, Funso. Yes, I think that's quite a, a difficult um, uh, question to answer in a general sense, but I hope that's given you some starting points. Um, and the next question from Marnie. Um, Marnie, if you're uh, available to speak directly, I'll unmute your microphone. Hello? Hello, yes, we can hear you. OK. I'm just wondering how is coarse grain dynamics different from molecular dynamics? Yeah, it's just, if I can go back. Okay. okay can you see the slides? Yes, 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 I can. Okay, so in the atomistic resolutions, we are treating all the atoms here, you're seeing all the different atoms as a bit. 
So all of these bits are treated in, this, uh, in these formulas. Whereas in the coarse grain simulation, we gather together a set of uh, different atoms, like you can see here, in a single bit. So we have less bits. So the resolution is not so high, it's, it's lower. And so we can simulate the larger um, uh, molecules and longer time scales because we have less bits. So when, when is the appropriate use of coarse grain dynamics? I mean, if, if you were going to recommend, if I want to study something, when can I use coarse grain dynamics instead of molecular dynamics? That depends on the level of resolution that you, you want to achieve. If, uh, if you are looking at the hydrogen bonds, for example, between one ligand or between the same uh, molecule, you need to go to the atomistic uh, regime. But if we, okay. you are interested in global movements, you can uh, try it with coarse grain. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, we've actually got quite a lot of questions queuing up. I'm going to get through as many of these as I can. Uh, we can maybe take the other ones to the forum later on. Um, if you don't mind, just to speed things up, I'm going to read the questions now to Adam. Um, we can follow up by unmuting you if you have any follow-up questions. Um, so the, uh, the next question is from Haitham, who asks, uh, can one add post-translational modifications to amino acids using MD-Web, and if so, how? Uh, that depends of if you have the library of the of this post-translation uh, amino acid. So uh, we have some of them in the model uh, database. So maybe if you try it with MD Web, it, it will give you this known or unknown ligand. If it is known, is that because we have the library? If this is unknown, is because because we don't have it. So then we can prepare the library parameterizing this. But but I, I guess you can find the library for this uh, post-translation residue. You can use it if you want. It's a matter of uploading the library of this residue in, in MD Web. Okay, hi, Tham. I hope that answers your question. If you want more details, please uh, submit a follow up. Um, the next question is from Elvis Martis, who asks Is it possible to build lipid parameters files for Gromax using MD Web? It is not possible to build parameters using MD Web. It's possible to upload the parameters that you build with another program or another tool. MD Web doesn't allow to uh, um, produce parameters. Okay, thank you. Um, Dira has a, a couple of questions. I'm going to unmute his mic in a moment, but uh, before I do that, there's a question from Debajyoti Ghosh, who asks, can I use MD Web to simulate protein bound to a small ligand? Um, yeah, sure. Um, he says it's, it's I use related to the Prod yeah. RG server to build topology and then use Gromax, but it is tricky and laborious. Uh, yeah, but it, I mean, with MD Web, we can you can do that, but you need the libraries, you need the parameters for the ligand. That's the main point. <clears throat> and you can use other tools to do that, but in the MD Web is not prepared to uh, to build parameters for the ligand. But of course, if you, once you have the parameters, you can upload the parameters and, and run a setup, uh, and then um, prepare the configuration files to run the molecular dynamics with MD Web. Okay, thank you. I hope. Um, uh, Dirar, I have unmuted you. You said you had. Um, a few questions. Could I ask you to limit it to yes. one and maybe a follow-up because we're a bit short of time? Do you uh, Okay, okay, okay. So uh, the main my main question is: Is everything in uh, uh, MD Web is based on uh, BDB file? Can you build uh, new molecules and new systems? Uh, can you be more specific? Yeah. For instance, let's say you you wanna. Uh, let's say build uh, a system with a, pro a protein and nanotube, something like that. Mm, no, I'm the web is not prepared for that. No. Okay. Okay. Do you have one follow-up question, or is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My follow-up question is is about uh, can you do basically a setup uh, coarse grain simulations with the uh, MD web? Mm. Yeah, well, in coarse grain simulation, you, you uh, mainly 
don't need a setup because uh, in the ones that are implemented in MDWeb that are three, we have Brownian dynamics, we have discrete molecular dynamics, and we have a normal mode analysis, and we are using alpha carbons only as a resolution. So we can uh, extract the alpha carbons and directly start a coarse grain simulation. So you can run a coarse grain simulation with just the, the, the alpha carbons of your protein in MDWeb without uh, uh, running a setup before. Okay. Is that clear? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the next question is from Pankaj. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to read this out to save time. Pankaj Kumar asks, "Hi, I want to see or compare the molecular states of a ligand with a protein and one of its mutant. May I know how should I go through with this uh, computational molecular simulation approach?" So how to compare the molecular states of a ligand with a protein and one of its mutants. Are you able to answer that, Adam? And uh, but I don't understand if the mutated, if you have, if uh, he has a mutated protein and he wants to, uh, um, to study the different uh, states of talking with the ligand, or is the ligand that it's changing? Can we try to open the mic? Sorry, I, I myself was muted there. Um, yes, I've opened the mic. Um, <laughs> w w uh, Pankaj, do you want to, to speak to Adam directly? Do you have a microphone? Or maybe you could uh, type your question into the chat session if you don't have a microphone. We can possibly follow this one up later on. Yeah, sorry, I don't yeah. really understand the, the question. Sorry, my fault. Okay. No, it, it's difficult to convey it in a small space, Pankaj. Sorry about that. Maybe we can pose that question on the forums later, or you can get in touch with us directly. Um, uh, uh, Arnab um, had a question, so I'm going to unmute your microphone, Arnab, if you've got a question you'd like to pose to Adam. On you go. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. Hello, myself Arnam Naik. Hi. Myself Arnam Naik from India. Okay, please carry on. Yes, uh, I have a specific question that uh, is it possible to calculate binding free energy of a protein ligand complex from Romax generated trajectories uh, in MDOF? Is it possible? No, I'm sorry, this is not possible. We'll try to work on something like that, but in the near future. No, it's not still implemented in MDWeb. Okay, so uh, the, uh, another question is, uh, is it possible that Brumax generated uh, trajectories, uh, can I calculate uh, the binding free energy in uh, uh, Ember? I guess you can, but I, I didn't. I didn't do it. Uh, I, I haven't done it before. Sorry, um, but I guess it's possible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, can I uh, hope that in future uh, in MD Wave uh, we can expect uh, this type of calculation? Uh, we are working in different directions, but uh, but. We will add to the to-do list. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank, okay. Thank, thank you, Arnab. Thanks for your question. Um, my next, uh, the next question was from Mauricio, who asked, "Can I prepare a protein with glycans added on?" Uh, I don't know the answer. If this is, if this can be. Um, Treated like a ligand, I guess it it can be done, but I'm not sure. I mean, um, the thing here is that MD Web is uh, was implemented and was designed and implemented to ease uh, the usage of molecular dynamics, but uh, uh, basic molecular dynamics. And here we are talking about uh, advanced molecular dynamics, and the MD Web was not designed to that. Of course, we can try to uh, uh, to update and to um, try to 
uh, evolve our software and adding new functionalities, but this is, was not the, the first idea. Okay, Adam, thank you very much. We do have more questions in the room, but I'm afraid we've reached uh, the end of our webinar slot coming up to uh, five o'clock now at CET. Um, so uh, I would like to thank Adam again. Um, and Adam, if you could move to the final slide, I'll just say a, a last few words uh, to, to sum up today's webinar. Um, uh, thank, thank you all for coming along. Um, if you would like to find out more about BioExcel or as I say, uh, to uh, join one of the interest groups where you can uh, ask more of these kind of questions on the forum, uh, then please do have a look at our, our website uh, and, and sign up there for the interest group. If you don't sign up, you won't get all the, the information about the interest group. So uh, please do, do sign up if you think you might be interested. Um, finally, our next webinar uh, is going to be um, on the 10th of June, the subject is mutation-free energy calculations with PMX from Bert de Groot, who's another uh, partner in the BioXL project, uh, same time on the 10th of June. So uh, if you're interested in free energy calculations, then uh, it would be, be great to see you there then. Thank you all for coming along today. Um, there will be a follow-up questionnaire that uh, is sent out um, to help us understand whether this uh, webinar has been useful to you, we would be very grateful if you could take the time to fill it in. It's only uh, two or three questions. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon at the next BioExcel webinar. <laughs>